With Flash Catalyst, you can natively work with video and audio assets. In addition, working with video is just as easy as working with images that you bring in from Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop. Let's actually demonstrate how you can work with video and audio in your projects using Flash Catalyst. I've got this website here. I want to bring in a video to play as the, as the background of my project here. That will give it a really nice look and feel when I've finished the project. In Flash Catalyst, I can go to the File menu and select Import, and then I can import a video or sound file. When I go to, uh, when I go to uh, my, my video file, I can import an F4V, FLV, or MP3 audio file. If your video is in another format, you can either use the Adobe Media Encoder to convert it into any of these three formats. So I'm going to select this particular video file, and then select Open. Automatically, when you import a video in the Flash Catalyst, it's going to create a video player wrapper around it. In this case, I've got the play controls, scrubber controls, volume, and then also a full screen toggle. All these come pre-built with Flash Catalyst when you bring in a video object. The video controls panel over here in the properties allows us to use a wireframe control or a standard control, which actually uses a slight gray design. But in this particular case, I don't want to have a video control. I want this to play in the background of my application. So I can select none, and all the video controls will disappear. Now, I actually want to position this particular video player behind this mask that I've created. I'm going to rearrange that in my, in my layers panel here. And as you can see, I've got these, these ovals, highlights, and this mask on top of it that actually will then uh, change the, the look and feel of the, of the video. I can resize the video just like any other vector or bitmap object. And then the other piece that I can do is modify how this video will behave. On my properties inspector here, I can set this to autoplay and then also to loop. So now when I run my project, the video will automatically loop. Let's take a look at the finished project. As you can see, the video here is playing with that same jellyfish, anim uh, jellyfish video in the background, but it's continuing to loop. And this automatically plays when I launch the application. Now let's talk about audio files. Working with audio is a little bit different than working with video because I might want to choreograph multiple audio files within a particular transition or within a specific effect. Let's open up our Timelines panel because we're going to be working with that when we do this particular part. On the menu page of our, of our website, we have a number of buttons down at the bottom. These buttons will take us to individual pages of our site. In this case, we've got, this, we've got one here that will take us to the video. If I select the transition here for menu to video, I can then define how this will actually behave. This is where I start adding in the video, uh, start adding in the audio asset. To do that, I'm going to press the plus button here for add action. And then I actually want to use sound effect. When you use this, you're allowed to select an existing asset that's already been imported into Flash Catalyst or I can import directly from this panel. I'm going to select this mp3 file here, click open. It will then import that mp3 file into the project. I can preview it here, and then click OK. As you can see, that sound effect has now been added into my timeline here. I can change, uh, uh, I can change the duration of it if the sound effect is actually longer than the default length of half of a second. In addition, if I have other things that are happening in this particular transition, I can cue that sound effect to maybe have a slight delay. So that's how you work with video and audio assets inside of Flash Catalyst.